Strontium occurs naturally in the bedrock. That is absorbed in, into the water system, and the water, in effect, is absorbed into plants, and animals eat the plants. People eat both the plants and the animals, and they take strontium into their uh, system, and that's preserved uh, best in their teeth. What this means for archaeologists is that with a very minute sample of uh, individual's teeth, we can uh, get a strontium reading and we can then tie it to a geographical area. About a thousand years ago on the floodplain of Illinois River across from the modern city of uh, St. Louis, there appeared really the first North American city. Uh, it's called, we call it Cahokia. It's a massive uh, site that covers five square miles and involved thousands of people coming together. In the past, archaeologists have typically interpreted this coming together of people to, to be based upon local residents nucleating into a center. Um, but it's become clear to us with uh, increasing research that the local population, in effect, could not feed sufficient numbers of people into this center to account for its growth. So we thought that it must involve immigrants. The problem is, archaeologically, how do you demonstrate that? Well, fortunately, new techniques in uh, archaeological science have given us a methodology. And it all revolves around the isotopes of, of strontium. Now, in the mid-continent, strontium is extremely varied and we don't really have a full grasp yet of what the signature of strontium is across the entire Midwest. But at Cahokia what we can do is establish what the local strontium ratio should be. And we did that by taking the teeth of small mammals who, are, who were born and died in that very local area and we can establish a Cahokian signature for strontium. Then we look at the individuals who are were buried there through the uh, lifetime of Cahokia and compare their strontium signatures to that of the local area. And in doing that, what we determined is fully one-third of all the people at Cahokia were immigrants. This makes Cahokia, in effect, the first pan-Indian city in North America and really dramatically changes our vision about the dynamics and the fluidity of these early uh, population centers.